Hello and welcome to Hot and Heavy, the Elaine Bennis podcast. I'm your host, Shivani Desai. Today I'll be talking about Season 5, Episode 9, The Masseuse. Hello everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. It's almost Halloween. Uh, I love Halloween. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I know I know there are people out there who like passionately hate Halloween. <laughs> uh, most of those types of people I've met just hate the whole dressing up notion, but I like it. I don't really dress up anymore. Um, I might just put on a fun wig to hand out candy, but uh, actually this year we will be Well, my daughter and I will be going to the Lizzo concert. Lizzo is coming to Denver on Halloween. How fun is that? So she and I will be attending the concert while my husband takes my son out, which will be super fun. We're going to have to do the, uh, here's a big old bucket of candy on our porch. Take one. Ha ha. No one's really going to take one. So um, I think we're going to have to do that move. Oh, well, um, you know. That way, my son will get to trick or treat. He wasn't going to originally. So my son is uh, newly adorned. Well, not really newly. It's been about six months, but he has a palette expander and braces. So that really limits the amount of candy he can eat. And so he was so mature about it a couple of months ago when I was like, hey, you know, let's think about Halloween costumes. What do you want to be? And he was like, I don't think I can go. You know, I won't really be able to eat a lot of the candy that I get. And I just thought that was so incredibly mature of him. But then, of course, within the last like week and a half, he's like, you know what? I think I do want to go. It's like, and, and part of me is glad. I, I'm just like, you're just, you're nine. <laughs> you should still want to do this. <laughs> and you there's still plenty of things he can eat. There's a list of obviously like, gummy candies and like Skittles and things like that that he should avoid. But um you know, he can give those away to friends. And that's what he said. And he's got some friends in the neighborhood. And he's like, I think I'll just drop off all the candy I can't eat at my friend's house. So he still gets to enjoy the trick or treating part of Halloween. And then he's also going to be really generous with his candy. I think that's pretty good. And also my daughter who's 12, and she didn't go trick or treating last year for the first time. She was sort of over it. But (laughs) she's also... (laughs) Telling her little brother, hey, save some of that candy you can't eat for me. She still wants to partake in the candy, which I completely understand. Okay, uh, let's get into this episode, The Masseuse. The synopsis for this episode from my coffee table book is as follows. Jerry dates a masseuse named Jody, who never seems to want to give him a massage. Kramer hurts himself at a Giants game and gets a massage from Jody. George loses his girlfriend after he becomes obsessed with the fact that Jody despises him. Elaine's boyfriend has the same name as a serial killer, Joel Rifkin, so she asks him to change it. This episode was written by Peter Melman. Okay, so already (laughs) this synopsis is inaccurate in one of the statements here. Kramer hurts himself at a Giants football game and gets a massage from Jody. That's not accurate, guys, but that's no surprise. Par for the course when it comes to the synopsis. I don't know who the heck was writing them. All right, we start out in Elaine's office. Elaine and Jerry are on the phone. Jerry is telling Elaine that eight years is nothing to not have vomited. He hasn't vomited in 13 years. June 29th, 1980 was the last time he vomited. And before that, he (laughs) vomited on the same day, June 29th, 1972. He couldn't believe it. Elaine is pretty impressed. And she was wondering if her boyfriend Joel was normal since he hadn't thrown up in eight years. Jerry's like, don't worry, Elaine, your boyfriend is normal. He just happens to have the same name as one of the worst serial killers in the history of New York City. (laughs) A couple of colleagues stop by Elaine's office, and so she hangs up with Jerry. The actress who plays her co-worker is Lisa Pesha, and we will see her in a few more episodes as Elaine's friend slash colleague. And most recently, she's been in Hacks, which is a fantastic show. I highly recommend it. And uh, I think she's good. I I like her in this uh, little scene with Elaine. Well, anyway, she and a male co-worker say, oh, we just saw your boyfriend at a bus stop. What's his name again? Joel. Joel what? Uh, Rifkin? <laughs> I can't do it. Of course I can't do it. JLD does that so well. He, she's trying to just kind of muffle the sound of his last name. Rifkin, they say. 
And she says, well, yes, but it's just a coincidence, obviously. Oh, you better stay on his good side, they say. Elaine's kind of humoring them. Very funny. Okay. I wouldn't sleep with my back to him if I were you. Okay. Okay. That's enough now. That's enough. And then they keep going. The co-worker says, if you smell anything decaying in the back of his car, well, that's it. Elaine loses it. She says, hey, that's my boyfriend we're talking about. And he's a gentleman. He's good looking. He's a good shaver. And he hasn't thrown up in eight years. So just shut up about him. You shut up. (laughs) Oh, funny. My take on this scene, I think it's a really good setup scene. We find out Elaine's storyline right up at the top and the whole Joel Rifkin thing kind of comes out in natural conversation with Jerry. It's a tad expositional with Jerry's line about how he has the same name as one of the most dangerous serial killers in New York, but eh, I'll forgive it. I, I like the conversation leading up to it about <laughs> vomiting because I just feel like this is what these people talk about. It's a show about nothing. <laughs> and of course, you'll you'll talk about vomit streaks. Why not? I love an Elaine snap, the way she just snaps at her coworkers <laughs> and the way it keeps heightening. She's trying to be so polite, but we see it escalating. First, she's all very funny. And then, OK, that's enough. Still smiling, still sort of laughing along. And then, boom, she's had enough. It's so wonderful. And I love the physical part of it, too, the way she launches out of her chair and she sort of shoves them out with her yelling at them in their face. And just it's it's so great. The pointing. So well done. All right. Next, we're in Jerry's building. Elaine and Jerry are walking to his apartment and she's just oh, she's lamenting to Jerry about how she's dating a Joel Rifkin while the whole city is talking about this monster Joel Rifkin. And Jerry's just like, well, ask him to change his name. (laughs) She can't do that. Well, would you change your name if someone asked me nicely? Kramer enters. Elaine asks, well, how many people did Rifkin strangle? 18. 18 strangles. Kramer has a theory. Rifkin was adopted, just like son of Sam. So apparently adoption leads to serial killing. (laughs) Then he exits on that thought. Elaine tells Jerry that she and Joel have an extra ticket to the Giants game. Kramer immediately enters and says he'll go. Elaine says she'll leave a ticket for him at Will Call. And Kramer is so excited and exits. Uh, Elaine has second thoughts. Oh, maybe she should have asked George. And that reminds Jerry to tell her that George got back together with Karen. Who's Karen? Risotto. We see a quick flashback of the episode where she tells George she feels full after the risotto. Oh. Ooh, the risotto broad. And Jerry says that he's doubling with them tonight. And Elaine points out, I thought you hated double dates. Jerry says, you know, I'm doing it for George. It puts him at ease. He thinks it's a good personality showcase. Gives the date a window into his non-date personality. Elaine says, well, she's looked through that window and screamed at him to shut the blinds. Jerry says he's taking Jody, the masseuse. Elaine asks, oh, have you gotten a massage yet? No, Jerry says. He's so annoyed. And what's it going to take? Elaine points out, I think, the very obvious point. She gives massages all day. She doesn't want to give them on dates. I know. She just wants to have sex. (laughs) I like Jerry's delivery. Well, so what? So it's like going to Idaho and eating carrots. I like carrots, but I'm in Idaho. I want a potato. Such a great line. My take on this scene, I think it's so well written. It's so witty, very Seinfeldian. I love the suggestion for Elaine to ask Joel to change his name. Like, what a ridiculous piece of advice. And I think it's obvious Jerry's sort of kidding, but I like that he says it so seriously. Like, why not? You can do that. But it's also to plant the seed for what's ahead in the episode. This scene sets up George's, Jerry's, and Kramer's plots as well. It is a lot of dialogue to set up each of Jerry and George's plots, but it's it's so well written, I forgive it. Now, I've said it before, I, I usually like them to show instead of telling, but if it's written in an entertaining way, I mean, that's the bread and butter of this show, really, you know, the dialogue, the talking, the conversation. So it's all about everyday relatable things, but done in an entertaining way, a show about nothing, but very entertaining nothing. In that vein, um, Elaine doesn't get a ton of comedy except for like the window and shutting the blinds line. But I really like the scene. It works for me. It feels very, very quintessential Seinfeld. All right, next we're on the double date. George is so in his element. You can just tell he's relaxed. He's telling this story about being in a department store and the saleswoman is wearing this really low cut top. 
And George says that he asks her, when you put on a top like that, what's your thought process? I mean, Karen is eating this up. Risotto Broad is loving this, I think, more than the risotto. That is so funny. That is so funny, George. She is just (laughs) beside herself laughing at everything he's saying. Meanwhile, we see Jerry's girlfriend, Jody, just blankly staring and listening. She's not enjoying this story, and you can tell. And George even asks, are you hearing this? Yeah, I heard you, she says. While the actress here, we have the brilliant Jennifer Coolidge, who I'm sure so many of us recognize, uh, maybe from American Pie, Legally Blonde, the Christopher Guest movies like Best in Show or For Your Consideration. And she actually just recently won an Emmy for her portrayal in The White Lotus. And then I actually just finished the series on Netflix called The Watcher, which she is also in. Uh, Well, it doesn't matter what you know her from. Chances are you absolutely love her. Um, And it's because she's so brilliant, so hilarious. And even though this performance as Jodi is so different than what she's known for now, her very like broad characters, kind of over the top, you know, she's she's very um, like very expressive. She's got a very distinctive voice. That's what she's known for now. But I, I enjoy seeing this grounded uh, performance from her here in this episode. Uh, She gives just such a perfect level of disdain for George. She does so well opposite Jason Alexander here. And it's just a treat to see her. And this was her first televised role. I think that's pretty amazing. I did do a little research. I was wondering if she ever talked about, after gaining, you know, such notoriety and fame, if she ever talked about being on this episode. And she sure did. I thought this story was actually really cute. She talked about how... She got the audition, and by this point, Seinfeld was super popular, so she was very excited to get the audition. She was a member of the Groundlings, I should mention, out in L.A., so that makes sense that she got this audition. Well, anyway, she said that she just had nothing to wear. I mean, like, nothing that was super provocative or sexy. She knew she was going to be playing Jerry's girlfriend, so she had it in her head that, well, I have to look as attractive as possible. So she went into a store and she told the saleswomen who were there, I have an audition for Seinfeld tomorrow. And they both looked her up and down and said, oh, honey, you need something to wear better than that. (laughs) So they helped her pick out her outfit. And then she went on to say that when she was filming the episode, she just she was like a deer in headlights. She just did not know at all what she was doing. She's like, in fact, I'm not sure you can call what I did in that episode acting because I just, I didn't know what I was doing. I was so nervous the entire time. And so that was what she said about her experience on Seinfeld. And the last thing I want to say about Jennifer Coolidge, she's another comedic actress who belongs to the same club as JLD for me. She will look idiotic for the sake of comedy and without worrying about her looks or femininity. it's, It's not about that. It's about getting the comedy across. And... And that's what I fucking love about her and JLD and many other uh, comedic actresses out there. But I did want to mention that, yeah, she's in that same club for sure. All right, back to this scene. <laughs> Jerry starts rubbing his neck, telling Jody it's killing him. Very tender. She ignores Jerry and turns to George and asks, so what did she say? Referring to the saleswoman that George asked about her thought process wearing such a low cut top. Top. I keep saying top like I'm from Boston. And George is like, well, nothing. I didn't actually say it. Karen laughs again, of course. Jody points out, you just said that you said it. Sweetheart, I was exaggerating. Karen is beside herself at this point. She's learning a lot about George. She's never seen him like this. And Jerry starts again trying to get her attention about his neck. It's like someone's pulling on wires back here. Oh, that one gets me every time. I don't know why the pulling on wires line <laughs> just strikes me as so funny. We will say it. My husband and I will say that if we um, have like sore necks or something, which unfortunately is happening a lot. But that's a whole other story. Uh, George then continues on with this very <laughs> sexist train of thought. You never see a really attractive woman getting a traffic ticket. Jody says, well, that's absurd. My sister got a ticket last week. Are you saying she's not attractive? Well, I've never met your sister, but obviously these are not hard and fast rules. Uh, Darling, uh, the tea is getting a little cold, sweetheart. (laughs) There's something so douchey, and it's so well played by Jason Alexander here. 
I just, it's just like the douche meter is like on level red for me whenever men call their servers or female servers dear or darling or sweetheart. Like, I don't know why. I mean, I know they're terms of endearment, but for me, it's just like, don't do that. I had a friend, a coworker who did this. And he was a young guy, like he was like a couple years older than me. And this was back when I was in my 20s still. And he would call. (laughs) So I'm talking about like a 27 year old man calling his female servers dear. He'd be like, thanks, dear. Okay, dear. I'm like, what are you doing? (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) Jody's had enough. She turns to Jerry and asks to leave. So they get up to leave and say their goodbyes. George tries to go in for a hug and kiss with Jody, but she avoids it and awkwardly shakes his hand instead. Next, we're in Jerry's apartment. Jerry and Jody are hanging out, and Jerry is not giving up. I mean, he is really putting on the pressure, no pun intended, telling Jody how he strained his neck by (laughs) trying to brush his teeth by keeping the brush still and moving his head from side to side. But Jody isn't taking the bait. Instead, she's still so distracted by George and just his behavior. Jerry, as she's talking about how how disgusted she is with George, puts her hands on his shoulder. And then that didn't work either. But she does make a move. She starts kissing his neck. And Jerry backs away. What are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? (laughs) He rolls his eyes. No massage yet again. Next, we are back at the restaurant. George and Karen are still there. And Karen is pretty turned on by George's performance. You can see it in her demeanor. She's ready to go and get some action. But George, is he's distracted. He's sort of fixated on how cold Jody was to him. He definitely picked up on something, especially the second time he sent the noodles back. (laughs) I thought that was such a great addition to (laughs) the scene. Like, oh, God, he's one of those guys. Karen is not interested in this, and she wants to get on George fast. But George won't quit. So you think she liked me? Karen drops her head in frustration. Next, we're at Elaine's apartment. Yay, an Elaine scene. We see Elaine on the couch reading, I think, a Sports Illustrated, some kind of football magazine, maybe. And Joel coming up behind her with his hands extended. He puts his hands on her shoulder and scares the shit out of her. What are you doing? Massaging your neck. Elaine relaxes. Oh, massaging. Joel asks if she's boning up on football and joins her on the couch. She uses this as a way to discuss names. She notices a lot of players are named Dion these days. What a cool name. If I were to change my name, I think I'd go with Dion. Joel kind of looks at her funny. Dion Bennis? She says, well, as a woman, it makes no sense. Um, hello, Elaine, Dion Warwick. Come on. But she says, if I was you and I decided to change my name for no reason whatsoever, Dion Rifkin. Wow, that is so cool. Eh, He's not so sure. Okay, Elaine says, uh, maybe you're not a Dion. She looks back into the magazine. Oh, oh, she gets so excited. OJ, she loves it. OJ Rifkin, please change your name to OJ, please. She's totally in his face. He's so confused. What's going on? My take on this scene. It's a fun scene. I li- I really like this guy who plays Joel. He's very cute. He's very nice. And uh, I mean, obviously, I have to point out the irony of Elaine fixating on the name OJ for Joel to change his name to. And this is, I looked it up, just nine months before OJ Simpson was arrested for Literally one of the most infamous murders of the century. Just what a crazy coincidence. I <laughs> I like we get another Elaine snap here. She's not angry, but it's just excitement and gets in Joel's face about changing his name. And, and that's just, to me, indicative that she's not getting over this. She can't accept it. So she's just like, come on, come on, let's just, just do this, please. All right, next we're at Monk's. Jerry and George are sitting at a booth and Jerry isn't very excited about the sex he had with Jody. Not that it wasn't fabulous, but he wants the massage. George, on the other hand, clearly wants to talk about the double date, saying, oh, they all had a good time. Everyone was very pleasant. And he asks Jerry, what did Jody say? She said she had a good time. And George accepts it. Okay, what? She had a good time. Great. 
And then Jerry hesitates with his agreement in that, and that's all it takes. George knew it. She didn't like me. Jerry confirms, no. What were her exact words? I do not like him. (laughs) And George, of course, is so offended. All right, next we're back in Jerry's hallway. George is saying that Jerry is not right about his vomit streak. He vomited in 87. No, 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 that was the dry heaves. They see Jody in the hallway with her massage table, and George is laying it on thick with a big, hey! Jerry asks what she's doing there. Oh, she just gave a massage to Kramer. Oh, Kramer. Jerry does not like that. And anyway, she's got to run. And then George insists on helping her take her table downstairs. This is what I do. <laughs> she's, of course, not excited about this at all. Kramer comes out into the hallway and Jerry is so annoyed. He yells at Kramer, I haven't even gotten a massage from her yet. Well, buddy, you don't know what you're missing, he says. We cut to Jody and George on the curb and he's just, oh, he's just trying so hard, bragging about his cab hailing technique. It's so cringy. The cab pulls up. He helps her and tells her to say hello to your sister. <laughs> I love this response. You've never met well, he doesn't, doesn't matter. He still wants her to know he says hello. He's running alongside the cab at this point. He bets her sister is a knockout. Back in Jerry's apartment, Kramer is describing what the massage was like with Jody. Jerry is getting increasingly mad. And finally, he tells him that the massages are out, Kramer. All right, next, we're at the Giants game. Elaine sees that Joel has photos in his wallet and that that's very normal. You're totally normal. She asks about a photo and he says, oh, that's my mother. Oh, yes, I see the resemblance. No, there's no resemblance. Elaine, I'm adopted. Uh Uh-oh, you know Elaine's thinking about Kramer's adoption leads to serial killing theory. Then we cut to Will Call. Kramer doesn't have his ID, and that's a problem. Only the person who left the ticket can confirm that he is actually Kramer, and that's his ticket. So we're back to Elaine and Joel, and we hear the announcer call out for Joel Rifkin. He needs to report to the stadium office. Of course, everyone reacts around them like, holy shit, Joel Rifkin? (laughs) And then Joel says, who could be calling me here? And they all kind of look at him. Oh, they're horrified. And Elaine says, hey, he's not the murderer. (laughs) I like this scene. Um, I think this is a great tie-in to what Kramer said, obviously, with Elaine, I'm adopted. Yeah, it's just a really fun scene. It's kind of short, but I love JLD's delivery. He's not the murderer. (laughs) Just again, still trying to be so pleasant, even though this is not a great situation. All right, next we're at Jerry's apartment. Kramer enters all stiff from the Giants game, the unforgiving seats, and then he dove over some rows to catch a ball. He tells Jerry, you know, I need a massage and that Jody's the best. I don't want to go with anyone else. And that's it. Jerry is determined to get a massage. Next, we're at Monk's. George and Karen are at a booth. George is still bitching about Jody and how rude she was to him, even though he helped her with her massage table. Karen is so over this. She says she's getting really tired of hearing about her. What, what, you got a little thing for her? George says, no, I mean, she's dating my friend. It's it's courteous to get along. And Karen says, well, so what if she doesn't like you? Does everyone in the world have to like you? <laughs> and Georgia says, yes. <laughs> All right, next, we're at Elaine's apartment. Elaine is sort of comforting Joel on the couch. She totally supports his decision to change his name. And really what convinced him was the experience at the Giants game. And he needs to make a change, he says. Elaine does say, though, she was willing to stick it out with Joel Rifkin. So they each have a list of 10 names and they can veto the other if they don't like it. Joel starts with Stuart. Elaine vetoes. Oh, you don't like Stuart? I've never met a normal guy named Stuart. Todd. Veto. Then Joel's like, well, I think you're really going to like the next one. Alex. Oh, no. Helene has a bad association with the name Alex. Apparently a guy in college who sat next to her would always go, ah, after sipping his coffee. And uh, yeah, she couldn't, she couldn't take it. She had to drop the class. All right, my take. Uh, This is a very fun scene. I I love that Elaine totally lies through her teeth about sticking it out with Joel Rifkin. She's saying this because now he really wants to change his name. So it's OK for her to say that because it's going to change anyway. And the whole 10 names thing. What a fun writing device that it, it's sure to be funny. You can do so much with just saying a name and then having a reaction to it. 
And that bad association with the name, how relatable is that? <laughs> um, I, I have my own. It's the name Kristen. No offense to any Kristens out there, but I was bullied by a girl named Kristen for a few years in elementary school and middle school. So that's just how it is for me. I would never certainly change my name to Kristen or name my kid Kristen. And uh, yeah, so that's my bad association name. Peter Melman did a great job here. We all have so many opinions when we hear names too. It's like, you know, does someone look like their name or, ooh, if they have this name, you've known like 18 other bad people who had that name. It's just what a fun thing to include in this story because there's just so many things you can do with it. All right, next we're at Jerry's apartment. Jody arrives, but uh, she still has her massage table with her because she was running late, didn't have time to drop it off. Jerry has no problem with that, of course. He's playing new age music. <laughs> he's trying to set the mood. <laughs> then he acts like he's interested in the engineering of her table, but he opens it up to obviously have it set up. That's a hell of a piece of equipment. She starts rubbing his shoulders, talking about what we're going to do tonight. And he grabs her hands and then lays down on the table. She, she doesn't want to do that. No, I can't do this. And Jerry tries to force her, even though she refuses. Next, we are at Karen's apartment. She and George are kissing on the couch, and then George stops. <sighs> he should really go talk to Jody. And he wants to go at that moment. What, you want to go now? Oh, she's had enough. You're obsessed with her. And George says, I, I know. Finally, Karen just makes him choose. Look, she hates you. I like you. Who do you choose? <sighs> he chooses Jody. <laughs> he can't stand when someone hates him. Well, Karen says, well, now I hate you. That I'm used to. All right, next we're at Elaine's apartment. Joel and Elaine are still discussing names, but it's getting a bit tense. She suggests Ned. Ned? Ned's a guy who buys the regular underwear. Next! Elaine suggests Ellis. Oh, well, that's just like Alex. Elaine says they're totally different, not even close. He says, next! Oh, what's the point? No, come on! And she takes a deep breath and says, Remy. Remy Rifkin? Should I get a beret? Oh, Stuart's a lot better. Little Stuart Rifkin likes to go shopping with his mother. My take on this scene, I love that the continuation of this scene of them going over names, it like jumped in time and we're obviously in this tense vibe. The name exchange obviously isn't going well. And I love the way Joel reacts to all the names. Ned, Ellis, Remy, really, really funny performances by both actors here. And this is another instance where Elaine gets so overly upset and like digs her feet in with a boyfriend. Last time it was with Jake Jarmel and the exclamation point. And look, a new name is definitely more significant than punctuation, but I love how passionate and stubborn Elaine gets and then has to insult him with the Stuart thing. <laughs> Ah, oh, but that's what we love about Elaine. Even though, even if she's being totally illogical, totally ridiculous, it's the way JLD performs it. It just makes it so entertaining. All right, next we're back in Jerry's apartment after he tried to forcibly get her to massage him. And Jody says, look, no means no. Jerry accuses her of being a massage tease. I mean, look, she came over with her table and her little oils. And she tells him, look, I don't submit to forcible massage. But Jerry tries again, takes her hands and tries to get her to massage and she just pushes him away, tries to leave, and then George enters. Well, he confesses that uh, this woman hates me so much, I'm starting to like her. It's irresistible. Jerry can see that. And Jody just can't believe how incredibly insane these two are and leaves. George goes after her, but Jerry warns him, George, I wouldn't push for the massage. All right, I'm going to take a quick break, and I will see you on the other side. Every once in a while, a show comes along that leaves you so fresh and smooth, you almost need to watch it for your own well-being. Introducing NBC's newest workplace comedy, Shave Bus. Huh? What's a shave bus, you ask? It's like a food truck, but instead of feeding people, we shave people. And instead of a truck, we use a bus. Watch the Rifkin brothers build this family business from scratch while trying not to kill each other. And Joel, you know, he could provide his expert neck massages after each shave. Right, Todd, because rubbing strangers' necks is my dream. <laughs> Remy? 
How many times do I have to tell you? Stop stealing my irregular underwear. I will stop as soon as you stop throwing my billets in the trash, Ned. Uh, you're not French. <laughs> Rifkin men have been superior shavers for generations. And when all seven brothers found themselves hard up for cash at the same time, well, they decided to buy a bus, refurbish it, and drive around offering the best shaves in town. Alex, I've been painting this bus for hours. Can you please give your twin brother a hand? <laughs> Sorry, Ellis. On a coffee break. <laughs> but not all the brothers were blessed with the gift of shave. Okay, what are we going to do about Stuart? He can't shave, he's a terrible driver, and he can barely tie his shoes. I heard that. <laughs> Oh, God, sorry, buddy. Uh, hey, hey, maybe you could play your recorder during the shaves? <laughs> Tune in to the series premiere of Shave Bus this fall on NBC and be ready to fall in love with the Rifkin brothers. Shave Bus. Close shaves, closer brothers. And we're back. Okay, I'm going to move right into Contributor Corner. There were not very many worthwhile extras, so I'm skipping that this week. All right, Greg sent in some thoughts about the masseuse, and this is what Greg had to say. We get a much more toned-down early version of Jennifer Coolidge in this episode. I believe this was her first speaking role ever, and she does an excellent job here playing against both Jerry and Jason. It's almost hard to believe it's her given the voice is so different than what we've become used to. Ah, yes, exactly, Greg. I, this is, <laughs> she's definitely unrecognizable to what she is famous for now, the, the personas she's played, and yeah, to your point, the voice. I mean, everything, all of her attributes that she's known for now, this is completely different. I mean, this this was her very first speaking role, and I agree. She does such a great job, despite what she says in that interview about not knowing what she was doing. She plays so well against Jerry and Jason and I think yeah really holds her own I just I love her performance next Greg says I love the conversation between Elaine and Jerry about Jerry's last vomit which leads into the Joel Rifkin introduction I find the really phony co-workers annoying and over the top but Elaine hilariously defends her new guy wholeheartedly by shouting them away yeah I just don't understand like, if they don't even know his name, how would they recognize him at a bus stop? It's just kind of weird. Um, I feel like they could have done the same thing if, like, they saw her walking in with him. and Like, oh, is that your boyfriend? What's his name? You know, whatever. But anyway, um, I yeah, I definitely agree that they're annoying, but it, we, it pays off with Elaine shouting at them because I love a good Elaine snap. Greg's next thought, JLD's funniest scene is when she's going over new names for Joel with him. It's insane to me that OJ is one of the names she suggests, given that he would, quote, allegedly murder people not too long after this. Elaine's suggestions are pretty bad, and I don't blame Joel for getting upset, given that it's his own name they are discussing. She's gone way overboard, but it works because she plays it in such a funny way. My favorite is when she turns down the name Alex because she hated how an Alex in college drank his coffee. I also love how she mocks the name Stuart. Right. I mean, again, this what a great writing device. Anything with names can be so fun. I, I'm reminded of another, I mean, very similar scene in Friends when uh, Rachel is pregnant with Ross's baby and they are going over what names they like. It's the same exact thing. Veto, veto, like they keep vetoing the ones they don't like. But it's it's similar where with each name, the other who doesn't like it will say like, oh, this is this kind of a person. So I'm not mad at that. Whatever. It happened in two of my favorite shows, but it's still so fun. Yes. The Mocking of Stuart, just a great JLD moment, both with her voice and physically. It's all great. And I totally agree, Greg. This is why we love Elaine. And <laughs> this is another... <laughs> version of her just being so stubborn. I mean, it is his name. He's the one that's going to have to deal with it. But also, you know that Elaine sort of takes ownership. It's her boyfriend. So his name and the quality of his name is going to reflect on her. So you know that's exactly what she's thinking about and why she's so invested. And Greg's final thought, 
This is quite a great episode all around. Everyone gets a funny storyline and it's divided up and flows very well. If there's one thing I would have liked, it would have been a scene where George discusses why Jody doesn't like him and get Elaine's input on it. She could have been at the diner with Jerry and George when George finds this out and it would have fit. George and Elaine are never together in this episode and I feel like she could have added even just an eye roll or a line about how she doesn't like him either. Oh, I love that. I love that, Greg. I didn't think about that either. I do have some scene swap ideas at the end. Um, stay tuned. Yes, this how obvious. Elaine would have so many opinions about Jody not liking George. I mean, yes, of course. Like it could be, oh God, now my my mind is racing now with ideas. It, it could be something like how he comes off initially and all of his annoying traits. Um I could even see Elaine and Jody having like a scene together, just kind of like trading notes and, and stories about George and how annoying he is. Oh, that really would have been fun. Wow. that And I'll get into later, too, how I feel like this episode is so jam packed with really strong storylines that um, we could have gotten away with maybe extracting an entire storyline and putting it into a whole other episode because it was that strong. But anyway, I will get into that more in detail later. But I do love your suggestion. That is amazing. Elaine would have fit so well in this whole conversation about <laughs> Jody not liking George. Ah, uh, missed opportunity. Thank you so much, Greg, for sending in thoughts. If you, listener, would like to become a contributor to Hot and Heavy, please email me at elainepodcast at gmail.com. That's elainepodcast at gmail.com. And you will receive emails from me basically saying, hey, I'm starting this episode. Send me notes by this date. And if you do, I might include it in the episode. So it's not a lot of commitment. You participate when you want to and when you can. So no pressure, but I would love to get some more contributions to the show. And it could be just something as simple as uh, I didn't like this one part one thing. It could just be one thing. I just want to get some more voices because I'm sure you guys are like, it's only Shivani all the time. All right. My favorite Elaine moments of the episode has to be the mocking of little Stuart Rifkin likes to go shopping with his mother. Love it. A close second would have to be her blowing up at the coworkers in the beginning. I love the range of emotions she shows <laughs> in that in that scene. <laughs> trying to be polite, trying to just kind of take it and hopefully they'll stop. But when they don't stop and they go too far, ooh, Elaine snap. And I love it. And my final notes of the episode. <sighs> We've gone now a few episodes where Elaine hasn't had the best plots or wasn't utilized enough. I mean, last week was a, the best example of that. Her plot in The Barber was literally just a last minute change from the original plot she was supposed to have in that episode, which also sounded really bad. So <laughs> The Barber is just a low point for the Elaine character, I feel. But this one, dating a Joel Rifkin, fantastic premise, but I'm greedy. And I think we could have had so much more with this name issue. And uh, I don't know, just some more creative ways to uh, tackle her issue with Joel Rifkin. So in that vein, my scene swap idea would probably be to trim a little bit off the Karen and George drama. I mean, even though I do love oh, Jason Alexander's performance in this episode is so fantastic. Uh, but like little trims here and there. I think also we could probably cut out Kramer getting that massage from Jody. I don't think we needed it so much. I think we could have seen Jerry just getting frustrated even without that. But I can see why they included it as well. Bottom line, I just would have liked another scene with Joel and Elaine, especially because JLD and his name is Anthony Sestero, who plays Joel. They just had such a great chemistry. So I just wanted to see more of that. So uh, continuing my thought uh, that I was mentioning when I was going over Greg's thoughts, this episode is full of really strong storylines. And I could even see like so strong, I could even see them like plucking one of them out for an entirely other episode. Like Jerry's girlfriend hating George is so rich with possibilities. I think it could have been easily the A storyline of another episode. Um, and this episode still would have had so much to to tackle. And lastly, JLD, she's got more subdued comedy here. You know, it's nothing over the top, which is fine because uh, she does such a great job with that, too. You know, that scene with Jerry in his apartment, very grounded, more dialogue back and forth. But again, really well done, really well written. 
she has fun moments here with Joel. So I think, yeah, it's just, she's just at her peak charming and I absolutely love it. And I think that's all I can say about the masseuse. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you next time.